Hi there, in this video we are going to finally go through and find the least squared estimators in matrix form. At the end of the last video we had this sort of relationship which we'd found for our derivatives of our cost, which in the case of least squared estimators was the sort of square, the sum of square errors with respect to our parameter vector beta hat. And remember that beta hat is our sort of least squared estimate or least squared estimator for the population parameter vector beta. So this isn't purely a bivariate case. This sort of generalizes to any number of independent variables and corresponding coefficients in the population. And we got this sort of thing up here above. The idea here is that now we have to rearrange this expression in order to get our beta hat. So a first sort of step to do that is to take this x prime or 2x prime y over to the other side, in which case we get 2x primed x times beta hat is equal to x primed y, or 2x primed y, sorry. Okay, and then we notice that we've got a 2 on both sides, so we can just divide through by that. So we've just got x primed x times beta hat has got to be equal to x primed y for the case of least squared estimators. Okay, so how do we get beta hat on its own now? Well, the idea is that we have to pre-multiply both sides by the inverse of x primed times x. So the left-hand side becomes the inverse of x prime times x times x primed times x times beta hat, which is equal to x primed x to the power minus 1 times x primed y. And by pre-multiplying the left-hand side by the inverse of x primed x, then these two terms essentially cancel one another out because the inverse of a matrix, let's say A, times that matrix A itself, is just going to yield the identity matrix. So I just get out of this whole thing, I just get the identity matrix, which then when I apply that to vector beta hat, it just yields beta hat. So in fact, we've got a form for our least squared estimators in matrix form. It's just equal to x primed x to the power minus one times x primed y. So this is a sort of very, it's quite a famous result and it's something which you'll see everywhere in sort of graduate courses in econometrics. And I'm going to state it from now on without any proof or without any sort of justification. It's just something which you need to know. It's probably the most important thing which we've covered thus far in the videos. And it's quite a nice expression. It's not too complicated to sort of learn. Um, and it's quite nice in the sense that this, now we've generalized our least squared estimators to deal with very sort of multivariate cases. So this is the form of least squared estimators in sort of when I've got sort of P parameters in my population or when I've got sort of P independent variables causing and uh, dependent, uh, causing changes in a dependent variable. Something I should say about this particular expression is because it contains an inverse matrix, then this basically assumes that beta hat only exists, or it implies that beta hat only exists if the matrix x primed x is non-singular. If x primed x is singular, then this tells me that the inverse doesn't exist so I can't actually derive least squared estimators for the parameters in that case. An example of when x prime x is in fact singular is when we have perfect collinearity amongst regressors. So if I have perfect collinearity, then it turns out that basically a couple of my rows, are, you can sort of think about them as being identical to one another. So I actually can't invert this thing. It's, it's not singular. Um, which means that we can't actually derive our least squared estimators um, beta hat in this particular case. In the next video, we are going to go through and we're going to talk about why, or we're actually going to derive why least squared estimators are or unbiased under the zero conditional mean of errors assumption. I'll see you then.